Yes, today we are going to start the new play, the proposal written by uh, the Russian writer Anton Chekhov. So this play, children, the proposal. Uh, so here three words are written. Let's see, like, what do you think the meaning of this proposal might be here? So the word proposal has several meanings. Can you guess what sort of proposal the play is about? A suggestion, plan, or scheme for doing something. This is the meaning of proposal. Second meaning is an offer for a possible plan or action. And third is the act of asking someone's hand in marriage. So what this play is about children, which meaning do you think might be applicable in this particular play? Third one, the act of asking someone's hand in marriage. So here the proposal is about, uh, about the act of asking someone's hand in marriage. So you might have got to know, like, uh, let's see now, who is going to propose whom and why. Usually the proposals are made uh, when uh, one loves the other one. So then one proposes the other one. So in this special play, in this particular play, we'll see that uh, the boy goes in to propose a girl, but not because he marries her, not because he loves her, uh, but because uh, uh, there are so many things which he has in mind. Number one, age factor. He thinks that he's, uh, he's at a critical age, 35 years. And even the girl is about 25 years of age. So he thinks that uh, at this age, you know, he must settle and he must live a quiet and a regular life. And uh, second reason that he proposes this girl is that uh, he thinks that he is already not very, uh, is not a very normal kind of fellow. He has, he has got some medical problems like uh, he feels palpitations, uh, that he becomes overexcited and all. So he thinks that now he should live a very quiet and a regular life and that would be good for him from medical point of view also. And then uh, second, the basic other reason also is like uh, uh, rich people often, you know, go in to marry the rich people. That is usually a custom, I guess, everywhere also, especially in India. Rich people marry rich people and uh, the middle class families go for med middle class families and so on. The purpose is that people bother, people actually consider these socials, the status they keep in mind. So why rich people marry the rich class? Uh, so that uh, they, are, uh, they get richer, of course. So here in this play, you know, we'll see uh, the kind of wedding. Uh, the reasons for proposal are not the, those immature one. Here the reasons are quite, you know, different ones the social status, the age, the requirements, the needs. And uh, the biggest thing is that it's a very humorous play. It's a farce. We'll discuss in details like what a farce is. But first, let us read the whole play. Then in the end, we'll discuss like how you think this play is a befitting farce. And before this, like the proposal, it's a very humorous play, very humorous. Uh, because like uh, the very main character, the one who will go to propose the girl, that person, you know, the way he would behave. He has gone to propose the girl, but eventually the whole, uh, these three people, the father of the girl, the girl and this boy, they all, uh, you know, end up in a big quarrel over, uh, over, you know, some uh, asset or some land. And then uh, in that quarrel or in that, uh, you know, uh, dispute, they forgot, forget that what the real purpose of his visit was. The proposal is forgotten in between, but yes, because it's a happy comedy also. So in the end, they are reminded of the fact like, oh my God, they had come for proposal. So the proposal is finally made and it is done. Okay, but in between the kind of, you know, the way they start uh, dispute, uh, quarreling over a very, very minor issue, especially about the estates or the property, that is very humorous. And that also shows like the how, uh, you know, narrow-minded these rich people happen to be old also. Okay, let's start. So the proposal by Anton Chekhov, a very, very humorous play. I guess you'll all enjoy this. So here is a one read on a Russian wedding. So you people in this very particular passage, you know, you've been told, we've been told like how the Russian marriages are held, like what ceremonies are held in the Russian marriages. And when you will read it out, then you'll make out like there are so many customs and rituals which are uh, common in India also. How Russian marriages uh, are like Indian marriages, you'll be like surprised to see like there are many customs. So read it out on your own. It's very interesting read also, then read it and then 
do this small activity on do you think indian and russian weddings have any customs in common with the help of the partner pranadeep so do this uh, you know work do this on your own and write on these columns today at home on your own tomorrow we'll just just to discuss the this part now the play starts the proposal originally entitled as a marriage proposal is a one act play a farce by the russian short story writer and a dramatist anton chekhov it is it was written in 1888 to 89 so something which was written in the last century that is still relevant so what would the things are being you know criticized the things which are being laughed at in this play you will see that those things are still relevant the play is about the tendency of wealthy families to seek ties with other family members families to increase their estates by encouraging marriages that make good economic sense so which people marry the richer classes only to increase their financial status only so the main character ivan lomov this will be the boy a long time wealthy neighbor of stefan chubukov although also wealthy comes to seek the hand of chubukov's 25 year old daughter so ivan comes to propose 25 year old daughter of uh, chubukov and the name of the girl is natalia so im, im, uh, ivan lomov is the boy and natalia is that girl whom he has come to propose all three are poor some people and they quarrel over very petty issues the proposal is in danger of being forgotten amidst all this quarreling but economic good sense ensures that the proposal is finally made and after all although the quarreling perhaps continues so despite the fact like the proposal has been done made even that the quarrel continues so these are the characters uh, so first one is uh, stephen stepanovich chobakov he is a land owner who will be playing the role of father of the girl then there is natalia stepanovona and she is a daughter 25 years old and finally it is ivan uh, lomov he is a neighbor of chobakov's a large and hardy but very suspicious land owner so remember only there are three characters in this very play father of the daughter the daughter herself and the one who has come to propose that girl so the setting of the play will take place in the drawing room of the chobakov's a drawing room in chobakov's house lomov enters wearing a dress jacket and a white and white gloves so he is formally dressed up chobakov rises to meet him so my dear fellow whom do i see ivan vesselvich i am extremely glad squeezes his hand now this is a surprise my darling how are you so mr chobakov the father of natalia he is very happy to see the guest and who the guest is his it is his only neighbor lomo thank you and uh, you may and how you may be getting on we just get along somehow my angel thanks to your prayers and so on sit down please do now you know you shouldn't forget all about your neighbors my darling my dear fellow why are you so formal in your get ups evening dress gloves and so on can you be going anywhere my treasure so chabukov asks him like if he uh, he welcomes him and asks him the reason for his being formally dressed up so why is he formally dressed up children janvi you tell janvi khushi uh, you tell <clears throat> she is okay prabhun raise hand prabhun again yes yes ma'am ma because he is uh, formally dressed because he has come to propose the daughter of uh, chukup yes because he has to come for the marriage yes yes you are right so he has come to propose that girl so wedding is uh, something which is a very formal occasion it everywhere so he has also come up formally dressed up to do something very formal right okay so he has come and chobakov asks him the reason for being so formally dressed up so lomov says uh, oh no i have come only to see you honored stefan stepanovich then why are you so uh, why are you in evening dress my precious as if you are paying a new year's eve visit well you see it's like this 
takes his arm. I've come to you. I've come to you, honored Stephen Stepanovich, to trouble you with a request. Not once or twice have I already had the privilege of applying to you for help. And you've always, so to speak, I must ask your pardon. And I'm getting excited. I should drink some water, honored Stephen Stepanovich. So in the whole dialogue, uh, you might have been able to make out that Lomov could not tell why has he come. Okay, it, this whole dialogue shows that he's so confused. Then he drinks water. Here is, uh, he, uh, he's come to borrow, so he aside, he talks to himself. He says he's come to borrow money, shan't give him money. So this Chabukov thinks that this neighbor might have come to ask for money and he decides that he would not give any money to him. But he tells him, what's it, what's it, my beauty? So this is how people happen to be uh, double standards. On the face of the others, people happen to be very sweet, but actually they are so <clears throat> mean. You see, honored Stepanovich, I beg pardon, Stephen uh, Honorich. So see how he is, uh, uh, you know, naming him. Stepanovich, uh, Honorich, I mean, I'm awfully excited as you will please notice. In short, you alone can help me, though I, I don't deserve it, of course, and haven't any right to count on your assistance. So still he has not told the reason. Oh, don't go round and round it, darling, spit it out. Well, one moment, this very moment, the fact is I've come to ask the hand of your daughter, Natalia Step uh, Stepnova, in marriage. So here he tells the reason that why has he come. Now see the, now let's see how the Chubukov reacts joyfully. Why Jov, Yvonne Vasilvich, say it again. I didn't hear it all. So he's very happy and he says that, please repeat what you said. Lomov, I have the honor to ask, uh, interrupting, my dear fellow, I'm so glad and so on. And yes, indeed, and all that sort of thing. See, he embraces and this is Lomov. I've been hoping for it for a long time. It's been my continual desire. He sheds a tear. And I've always loved you, my angel, as if you were my own son. May God give you both his help and his love and so on. And so much hope. What am I behaving in this idiotic way for? I'm off my balance with joy. Absolutely off my balance. Oh, with all my soul, I'll go and call Natasha and all that. So this is how this father of the girl reacts. <clears throat> the main thing is that he's very happy to know that uh, uh, Lomov has come to, uh, you know, ask for the hand of his daughter. And he's very happy that Lomov kind of uh, rich, you know, uh, land owner. He has, he's coming. So he doesn't find any fault with the proposal because uh, both of them are uh, status wise equal. <clears throat> so he's very happy. So he says, okay, let me tell my daughter, Lomov, greatly moved, honored Stephen Stepanovich. Do you think I may count on her consent? So Lomov says that, can I expect that your daughter will agree to this? Why, of course, my darling. And if she won't consent, she's in love. Uh, a guard, she's like a lovesick cat and so on, shan't be long. So Chabukov doesn't uh, mind uh, telling lies also. Uh, he says, oh my God, she is lovesick. She will never say no to you. So this is how these kinds of people become so selfish. Okay, for him, what is more important that Lomov kind of rich person would be marrying his daughter? Nothing like that. No, Lomov. It's cold. I'm trembling all over just as if I had gotten examination before me. The great thing is I must have my mind made up. If I give myself time to think, to hesitate, to talk a lot, to look for an ideal or for a real love, then I'll never get married. So Lomov says that the more important thing is that I must make up my mind. That is more important because if, uh, in your life, you don't get everything which is perfect and ideal. If you keep on thinking that when, if I get the ideal love or an ideal partner, or if I wait for the right time, then that will never come. It's cold, Natalia Stip, uh, Stepnova is an excellent housekeeper, not bad looking, well educated. So why has he come to propose Natalia? So his assumptions are, this is what he thinks about her, that she is a, a, an excellent housekeeper and she's not very bad looking. The point is that she's not very good looking also, it means this. 
so she is well educated what do i more want but i am getting a noise in my ears from excitement and it's impossible for me not to marry and then he says like uh, i should marry in the first place i am already 35 a critical age so to speak in the second place i ought to lead a quiet and regular life i suffer from palpitations i am excitable and always getting awfully upset so this is the meaning of palpitation itself when you get over excited and when you become upset that is that you become you have got palpitations so at this very moment my lips are trembling and there is twitch in my right eyebrow but the very worst of all is the way i sleep i know i no sooner get into bed and begin to go off when suddenly something in my left side gives a pull and i can feel it in my shoulder and head and i jump up like a lunatic means mad person walk about a bit and lie down again but as soon as i begin to get off to sleep there is another pull and this may happen 20 times okay so right now when there was no one on stage when father had gone to call natalia when in that girl also had not come then this boy talks to himself about uh, like why should he marry right now why is it, is this the right time for him to marry because of his age and because of his the uh, problem like uh, palpitations and uh, uh, his nature of getting so over excited and all he is not even able to have a sound sleep because of his that kind of nature so meanwhile natalia comes no natalia well there it's you and papa said go there's a merchant come from for his goods how do you do ivan vasilvich so natalia her father had told her to go to meet some uh, to meet some merchant but actually uh, natalia didn't know like who had come so now when he see when she finds that it was lomo she is she says okay how do you do so lomo how do you do honored natalia step number one you must be uh, you must excuse my apron and magling we are shelling peas for drawing why haven't you been here for such a long time oh sit down they sat seat themselves won't you have some lunch so natalia at this time when this man had come at the time she was drawing peas outside she was like she's a she might have been busy with her housekeeping matters so she does didn't even remove her apron and all and the, she had come like that only so that boy that lomo was so formally dressed up her skirt was so uh, she was like in very casually dressed up at that time but she doesn't mind and she makes him sit lomo no thank you i have had some already then smoke here are the matches the weather is splendid now but yesterday it was so wet that the workmen didn't do anything all day how much they have how much hay have you stacked just think i felt greedy and had a whole field cut and now i am not at all pleased about it because i am afraid my hay may rot so what she is talking about because these people are land owners so she says that yesterday it was very wet and nobody did any work and today i got the whole hay cut and now i am afraid that all hay would get rotten i ought to have waited a bit so what she could have, could have waited she might have waited for the cutting of the hay but what's this why are you in this evening dress well i never are you going to a ball or what do i must say you look better tell me why are you get up like that so now when she notices that that boy was so formally dressed up then she asks him the reason that why was he dressed up like that then he's excited you see honor natalia the fact is i've made up my mind to ask you to hear me out of course you'll be surprised and perhaps even angry so he's not coming to the point what's the matter well lomo i shall try to be brief you must know honored natalia step no one that i have long since my childhood in fact had the privilege of knowing your family so he says that i know your family right from my childhood my late aunt and her husband from whom as you know i inherited my land always had the greatest respect for your father and your late mother so he says that my great uh, my late aunt and uncle from whom i have got everything they had great respect for your father and for your late mother the lomovs and the chabukovs have always been very friendly and i might almost say that most affectionate regard for each other 
and as you know my land is a near neighbor of yours you will remember that my oxen meadows touch your birch woods so this line will become the cause of all dispute now so just now lomo who had just been talking about uh, uh, to, he, the one who had been just beating about the bush to come to the point but before he would come to the point this very you know his habit of talking about other things will become the reason of this dispute so he says that as you remember that my oxen meadows touch your birch woods excuse my interrupting you you say uh, my oxen meadows are they yours yes mine what are you talking about oxen meadows are ours not yours no mine honored natalia well i never knew that before how do you make that out how i am speaking of those oxen meadows which are wedged in between your birch woods and the burnt marsh yes yes they are ours no you are mistaken honored natalia they are mine just think ivon vessel which how long have they been yours how long as long as i can remember really you won't get me to believe that but you can see from the documents honored natalia oxen meadows it's true were once the subject of dispute but now everybody knows that they are mine there is nothing to argue about you see my aunt's grandmother gave the free use of these meadows in perpetuity to the peasants of your father's grandfather in return for which they were to make bricks for her her the peasants belonging to your father's grandfather had the free use of meadows for 40 years and had got into the habit of regarding them as their own when it happened that so here lomo is giving the reason like why was natalia confused whether it was theirs or not so he told her that because uh, because our grandmother gave the free use of these meadows to the peasants of your father and they used it for 40 years that's why you think that they are yours but actually they are ours and even the documents is supported natalia no it isn't all like that both grandfather and great grandfather reckoned that their land extended to burnt marsh which means that oxen meadows were ours i don't see what there is to argue about it's simply silly i'll show you the documents natalia no you are simply joking or making fun of me what a surprise we have had the land of nearly 300 years and then we are suddenly told that it isn't ours ivan i can't hardly believe my own ears these meadows aren't worth much to me they only come to five uh, decitals and are worth perhaps 300 rubles but i can't stand unfairness say what you will i can't stand unfairness so natalia says that it's really very very shocking that something which had been ours for the last 300 years we are suddenly told that that doesn't belong to us she says it's very strange and moreover she says that the land in itself doesn't matter it's of not much value but i can't stand unfairness on your part no more hear me out i implore you is i request you the peasants of your father's grandfather as i have already had the honor of explaining to you used to bake bricks for my aunt's grandmother now my aunt's grandmother wishing to make them a pleasant we can't make head or tail of all this about aunts and grandfathers and grandmothers the meadows are ours that's all mine ours you can go on proving it for two days on end you can go and put on 15 dress jackets but i tell you they are ours 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 i don't want anything of yours and i don't want to give anything of mine so there natalia stepnovana i don't want the meadows but i am acting on principle if you like i'll make you a present of them means i'll give you all those all those things i can make you a present of them myself because they are mine your behavior ivan is strange to say the least up to this we have always thought of you as a good neighbor a friend last year we lent you our threshing machine although on that account we had to put off our own threshing till november but you behave to us as if we were gypsies giving me my own land indeed not really that's not at all neighborly in my opinion it's even impudent if you if you want to know 
then you make out that i am a land grabber madam never in my life have i grabbed anyone else's land and i shan't allow anyone to accuse me of having done so then he quickly steps to the uh, cafe and drinks more water oxen meadows are mine it's not true they are ours mine it's not true i'll prove it i'll send my mores out to the meadows this very day what my mores will be there this very day i'll give it to them in the neck you dare so so then lomo clutches at his heart oxen meadows are mine you understand mine so you already know that uh, this boy lomo already suffers from palpitations and so much of uh, this uh, you know argumentation is not good for his health so he touches his heart because he might faint at that time natalia my movers will be there this very day i'll give it to them in the neck so then uh, okay please don't shout you can't shout yourself force in your own house but here i must ask you to restrain yourself if it wasn't madam for this awful excruciating palpitation if my whole inside wasn't upset i would talk to you in a different way oxen meadows are mine ours mine ours mine so see how uh, like kids they are fight, uh, fighting so then the father comes to book off what's the matter what are you shouting for papa please tell this gentleman who owns oxen meadows me or he then he says darling the meadows are ours lomov then says but please stephen stepnovich how can they be yours do be a reasonable man my aunt's grandmother gave the meadows for the temporary and free use of your grandfather's peasants the peasants used the land for 40 years and got accustomed to it as if it was their own when it happened that now the father says excuse me my precious you forgot just this that the peasants didn't pay for your grandfather and all that because the meadows were in dispute and so on and now everybody knows that they are ours it means that you haven't seen the the plan you will uh, i'll prove to you that they are mine you won't prove it uh, it my darling i shall okay so this way the fight is going on and on then we'll see uh, tomorrow we'll now continue up till here i guess it was enough so from here we'll continue tomorrow okay today is your test today but there won't be any test today because your tests will be all in alternate weeks okay but otherwise you people finish off your homeworks and all if there is something pending and start sending me the homework side by side and the activities is still some children have not sent today and tomorrow are the last two days i'm finally again extending two days for you people if somebody's work doesn't come then i won't give any marks okay and next week uh, there will be one uh, listening skills activity i'll be sending you that also you will do that will hardly take 5 or 10 minutes for you people okay